Some of you have never had to look for your food every day. Maybe you did once, once or twice when you were young. Two years, I'd get on the train. And I'd look out the window because people would be selling something next to the tracks in Russia. Hadn't been too long ago. And I saw them one day and I saw a few carrots. When I looked out the window, I got off the train and run back. It took me a bathtub of water to clean those carrots up. There's so much dirt on them. Then I saw beets another day and I got off the train and walked the beets. Hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't go loaded down with all kinds of food to Russia. I took my prayers and my fasting and my burden to change the nation. You don't know the places God puts you in. You know, and we don't know. We so ask people to, can you do this? Well, I don't know. I got this and I got that. That man in the Bible said that. He had a cow and a wife in a field. Well, the Lord said, well, I'll just remove them. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Lord's quiet. Mm. <laughs> you got to love the Lord more than your next drink of water. Mm. You got to believe for the safety of these people. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They're yes, Ukraine this yes, morning. Yes, they brought in another 7,000 soldiers. Yes. Yes. Um. around this time and I wasn't making the connection I was in my prayer time with the Lord and um, I was really my dad's died and gone to heaven he's been in Russia several times he's a spirit filled believer who had a revelation of the fivefold ministry back in the 70s so I was sitting in my prayer time and I said oh, I said God I'm just really missing my dad because we would talk about the military of God and we would talk about these revelations. And as I'm sitting there, I see this picture. And I see the back of my dad. He looks like he's 30. And he's in one of the war rooms of God. And he's bending over maps. And I knew it was Russia. There were maps there, and it was Russia, and, and he's been in the military for over 36 years. And there were others whose heads were bent over this over this over these maps. And I looked at this, and joy came into my heart, and I was like, Dad is right where he's supposed to be for such a time as this. It's such a heart for those countries. So I, and this was happening all during all this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You get a burden. You see a little news item. I traveled with a woman that went to every nation in the world before she died, stamped in her book of her life on in, inside of both covers, front and back, passport stamps of all the nations. And most of them she fasted 40 days water wow. on for every nation. Wow. 40 days on water. Every time the Lord told her every nation she went to to fast. And some of them, most of them should be 40 days on water. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yes. It takes that. The powers of darkness has got to be broken. Yeah. 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 And the Bible says these things don't happen except by prayer and fasting. Not prayer and faith, but prayer and fasting. Amen. Yeah. You know what fasting does? Do any of you know what fasting does? He told the devil to eat off the flesh. Remember the dust of the earth? What's the dust of the earth? Flesh. Your flesh and my flesh. Yeah. So when you fast, he starves. Yes. Oh, yeah. he starves. Wow. That's right. He starves. He knows that you're making headway with God. People don't understand that. But fasting afflicts your flesh. And this is what we have to get out of the way to see God move. But I've been praying every day, thanking God for their safety. For well, help. Amen. Paul said, if there be any praise, if there be any power, if there be any might, think on these things. Yes. What is goodly, love, pure, and holy. Yes. In Philippians, come on, yes. what is good? That God will save these people. Yes. I believe a little bit of Christ is coming to their lives that they wouldn't have had to wouldn't have had the nerve to dance hallelujah when they knew the enemy was coming now, how many of you want to do that you want to learn to dance uh, when you hear the enemy is coming you want to laugh with God he said I'm going to laugh yes. at their problems when they call on me yes. the wicked ones I'm talking about yes. hallelujah and I want you to lift your hands right now now the Ukraine is 
that way. It's about it's about to be between twelve and one. Not right here. I want you to release your faith for those people. Hallelujah. He said to Jonah, or he said to, or Abraham said, Lord, will you spare a city for 50, 40, 30, 20, 10? Come on, I believe there's 10 righteous people in the Ukraine this morning. Oh, come on. Come on right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak victory and deliverance. In the name of Jesus in the Ukraine. God, we send our faith this morning that you will send help. Lord, that your arm is not short. Neither is your ear heavy. Come on, pray with me. Like it's your family that's over there. Hallelujah. Lord, that you're going to bring deliverance, 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 deliverance. That you're going to work the miracle that only you can work. I thank you, Lord, that safety shall be the reward. Hallelujah. Safety shall be the reward. God, you can intervene in a way that we haven't considered. Even Jonah, you told go to Nineveh, Lord, to warn them, and you had mercy. Your mercy, how great is your mercy and your faithfulness every day. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to put a ring of fire around those people. A hedge of protection. Come on. Release your faith this morning for the people in the Ukraine. You don't know whether you might have some kindred people there. Maybe a missionary there. Maybe a friend listening there. But Lord, we ask you to have mercy. Mercy for the people in the Ukraine. Turn the attack of the enemy. Turn the attack of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. your faith work and keep calling upon the Lord and thanking him for helping those people and when God warns us that's why we get up and pray we intervene with his name hallelujah but then he's faithful when you he said call upon me and I'll show you didn't he say that call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not God Many of you have seen that. I've seen it. I couldn't even thank him. All I could do is weep and cry. Because he was so good to bring a victory. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. My mother is praying for my 18-year-old brother. He would left home when he was, I guess he may have been 19 by then. He left home when he was a young boy. My brother... I'm not going to tell on him, but he was in trouble when he was four years old. I remember my mother going to court, and I went with her, and she cried before the judge. She didn't know the answer. I remember the judge said to her one day, he said, I know you don't know. I know you've done everything you can for this boy. And she's praying one day, Lord, wherever he is, his name was David, help him. And the Lord spoke to her when she prayed that. He said, I've got him right now. Amen. He'd had an accident at that moment. He managed to crawl out of the car, was torn from one end to the other. He knocked on the door of a Pentecostal preacher's house. Didn't know it. <laughs> and he took him in. He's bloody. He's all cut up. 
Hallelujah. took care of him. The Lord said, I got him now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God right. calls the mother to pray at the right time. Amen. Yeah. And you keep the Ukraine at the top of your list. And just and all day long, Lord, we're asking you. You said, ask, and I'll give you the nations yeah. for an inheritance. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he say that? Right. Chapter 2 of Psalms. I'll give you the nations. We stand before the Lord. He's going to show you what your prevails, have your prayers have taken. Amen. What you're staying up at night has taken. What you've sacrificed is taken. Amen. Hallelujah. Your brothers and your sisters that you released in war did come home. Yes. You sent them away for your protection. They didn't come back. You sacrificed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Worst war, war in the world was World War II. We lost family and relatives. Somebody lost a husband, a brother, a father, a cousin, an uncle. Oh my. Horrible, horrible stories. The glory be to God. We need to pray more. We need to keep talking to the Lord. Amen. And it said that Reese Howe, here are the truths in this book of the Spirit for the Church of Christ today. It said he progressed to a place that world events were affected by his prayers. World events in the news. And I told you I traveled with his sister. I traveled a lot of places in the world. And we'd be in airports, and I noticed she'd be picking up papers from people who'd left behind. We'd be in the international airports. I thought, what in the world does she want? She'd have them under her arm getting on the plane. But I, she, would, she wouldn't read the whole paper. She would be looking for a little column. So I got and said something to her. And there must be something in the news about it. Or God wouldn't be speaking it to you when it's a world event. And she put it all together. And the next thing we know, she'd be on a plane or a train going to another country as an ambassador for the Lord, going with a message. And she went to China, and the emperor had sent out, sent out with one of his workers a sign with Ruth Heflin's name on it. She called ahead and said she wanted to see the emperor. She had a word for him. Everybody wants a word. Honey, you can bring me a word rather than an item. <laughs> Come on, if you had a word from the Lord, I'd rather hear it. Well, the car will wear out. The clothes Amen. will grow old. But the word will never change. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to get to know the Lord as your very best friend. Oh, you're next to kin. That you can feel him walking through your house. You'll know when he's in your house, when he's come to your front door. And I remember my sister had a son in the Vietnam War. And she said she prayed every night for him. And one night she had a dream. And she looked out her window. And she saw one of these cars from the military drive up. And two men get out in the dream. And they came up and knocked on the door. And she went and opened the door and the Lord was standing there. Wow. And then she woke up. He didn't die, but he told his mother the story later. He was a helicopter pilot. Wow. And the helicopter had slipped off the ship. And it was going down. Wow. He said he didn't know how he got control of that helicopter. Because wow. it already the bottom of it was in the water. In the ocean beside the ship. But somehow he got that helicopter up and got it back on the ship. Oh, praise whoa. be to God. Oh, God. Whoa. oh God, come on. Yeah. I'll make you pray two or three times. She prayed for her son every night. Every, yes, it is. Every single night. That was the Lord just coming to give her a little warning. Just pray some more. I got my hand upon him. Hallelujah. He's got his hand upon your children and your neighbors. And everybody up and down the streets that you know of your family. Come on, he's got his hand upon him. As long as you're connected. He said, I got one in every family. Hallelujah. He's going to stand in the gap. He's going to bring the hedge together, a hedge of protection. It speaks about, you know, the Lord looked in the book, I think it's Isaiah, 
and he saw that there were many disconnected, uh, but he was looking more for an intercessor. He was looking for somebody that knew how to pray. And that's what we're doing this morning. We're releasing our faith uh, and our prayers uh, and our praise unto the Lord for the people. Uh, it, what kind of a person would we be to stand here and hear the news and, and we could have done the, made the difference? We could have prayed. Come on. We don't want to hear any bad news. We want to hear good news. Good news. Good news. But it means you're going to have to get involved. And even if you were wrong, wear the mud well. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Get involved. Yes. And you'll have feelings. You'll be riding along. You'll be in, in, going past the place in a city somewhere. I've been in other countries. And, and I felt my spirit suddenly come alive. I remember I was driving through North Carolina, going to Florida. And I felt something at Fort Bragg, but I didn't know it was a military station there. I, I talked to my nephew later. He worked for the CIA. I said, what's going on? This was later. What's going on at Fort Bragg? He said, well, what are you asking? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm coming and going. I was going to the Dominican Republic. I had, took a bus to Florida because I missed my car. So I had to take a bus. I said, well, when I went by, I said, I felt waves of his glory come over me. Great after God. wave, after wave, after wave. And he told me this story. He said, oh, that's where they were, they were training a special mission to go over to one of those Muslim countries. This was back in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. They had captured an airplane of our people. Yeah. And they had eight pieces of our equipment and six of our men in the Reagan-Carter administration yeah. when it was getting ready to change over. And Carter wanted them delivered. And I had a dream one night. Come on, how many of you dream? Yeah. Come on, be like amen, amen. Joseph. Be a dreamer. Yeah. Yeah. Be like Peter, have visions. Yeah. Be like Paul, have a revelation. Yeah. And I had a dream that I went to the airport to buy a ticket. And when I went up to the desk, the man said, you don't want to see me, you want to see the man at the next desk. And I looked and he was a Russian. I thought, I don't want to buy a ticket from him. <laughs> so I asked the man, the first man before I went over, I said, how much will it cost me for this ticket? He said, oh, about $100. I thought, that's too much money. I said, well, how much would it cost me to go home? I went outside, and a big limousine was waiting outside, like the government uses. And they said, it'll cost you 6 or $8 to go home. I thought, that's too much money. It's not a whole lot of money, but money speaks of people. Remember I told you there were six men and eight pieces of military equipment. Yeah. The $100 was 100 people were involved in the escapade. I'm trying to remember what they called it. It was the Iranians that had captured yeah. a lot of our equipment and our military that were there. It had a name for it. I got it written down. I might put it in my book one day. It was 100 people involved. Remember the man said he wanted $100. And after I woke up from the dream, I heard the Lord say, this is what man wants to do. I didn't know I wasn't serving. I was serving God, but not much in the news. I didn't have a television. I didn't know that it was going to be on Reagan's watch and not Carter. Carter really wanted recognition that it was taken care of before the end of his, his time in office. But it happened when Reagan shook hands with Carter that they released the men that were left. Six men were killed and eight pieces of equipment was destroyed. That was the six or eight dollars it would cost for the limousine. It would cost Washington, D.C. Remember, the limousine was outside. I've had about five or six of those dreams of world events in my life. But you have to pray over it. When God said, this is what man wants to do. But they killed six of our men. I think it was several helicopters and jeeps. It was eight pieces of equipment. But if Carter had gotten it on his watch, we would have been in war with Russia. 
That's why I didn't want to buy the ticket from the Russian. It was too soon, you understand? He was trying to move too soon. Well, we're going to pray. We're going to believe God with our thank yous to the Lord for the Ukraine. All you have to do is just thank the Lord. Did you know I always think of little children when they want something from the mother and daddy because they love them so much. They'll jump up and down. Can we have it? Can we go? Can we go now? Can we go? Can we have it? You know, you can say we're going to get an ice cream and you wish you brought the ice cream home because they'll pull on you until they get it. But you do it because you love them. You love their ways, the sound of their voice. And God loves his people so much that when he hears our voice and our prayers, he said, my arm is not short. Neither is my ear heavy. He said, ask of me. Ask for the Ukraine. Ask for those people there. I looked at their faces on the news. And, and they got a light on their face. There's something about them that looks good. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. They've been down there dancing, yeah. believing yes. for the victory. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you to dance this morning. I'm telling you to wave your banners before the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Wait, these are your banners. Just wave your hands. Because he said, my banner over you is love. Hallelujah. And we've got to have a burden. So when I read the I've heard of Reese Howell all my life from a young Christian yeah. about his prayers. Hallelujah. Yeah. Pray and hide. Anybody heard of him? Yeah. He lived in India. The news is that he prayed so much for India. We're just now seeing a change. They're third in the race amongst the League of Nations. He prayed so hard that his heart moved from the left-hand side of his body to the right-hand side wow. of his body. He prayed till his knees turned into camel knees for God to do something in India. Wow. Amen. Anybody know what it's like? You pray and pray and you just pray in the spirit because the spirit knows what's needed. And you think, uh, take another breath. When you when that clock runs down, then you wind it again. And you keep praying. And you keep knocking on the door of the judge. Come on, you need to keep lifting up holy hands. And you do whatever you think you need to do to get the Lord's attention. You give him everything. Oh, for the soul. What would it profit a man to lose his soul? Oh, what's the worth of a soul to you and me? What is the worth of a soul? It's the last thing we deal with in our spiritual life. The things that get in our soul and we war with until Jesus comes. You know, those those are the last things. And the Lord asked my friend, Sister Ruth, one day. He said to her, brother, I'm going to show you the worth of a soul. And it put her on a crossroads of her life to make a decision. It was against everything she believed in to get this man delivered. And this, this is what I'm saying to you this morning. I feel the burden for these people. Anybody know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Did you just turn the news off? No, you can't. Uh, you'll you listen. Uh, they shot a plane down when they what was it, Cremera? Is that the name? When they took that, and nobody yet has been held accountable for shooting That's down right. that air that airplane coming out of Holland. Remember, it's three, four hundred people on were killed, civilians. Yeah. And nobody's taking responsibility for that yet. These things need to be dealt with. Justice needs to come. This is what we're talking about this morning. May the people that done it have no sleep until they confess to what they've done. Amen. The Lord told me one day, not long ago, be careful how you pray because I'm going to answer your prayers. <laughs> May they have no sleep until they confess to what they have done. Innocent babies hit the ground. People, other children saw it. Right. Saw babies flying out of the airplane. Right. Horror stories. And nobody feels bad about that? No conscience. I'm not here to make you feel bad this morning. I'm here for you to help me believe God for the Ukraine. Amen. I ask not for riches. <laughs> I ask not for fame, I ask for the Ukraine, in Jesus' name, I ask for the nations, I call them by name, I present them to the Father, in Jesus' name. Jesus name. 
as for the nations, I call them thy name. I present them to the Father in Jesus' name. May they not be naked. May they not be ashamed to stand before you, O God, in Jesus' name. I remember getting off the trains many times in Russia. And when I got on the train, I saw this woman one morning. She was selling these beautiful, beautiful flowers. They were purple. She had six in her hand when I got on the train. That evening, it wasn't dark yet. When I came back that night at 11, Brother Shambach was in town. She had three flowers left trying to sell it. I took them all, gave her a little more than they were worth. They were worth about it's four rubles, five rubles, and a dollar. I don't remember what I gave her. I just reached in, took what I had, and I said, go home. One lady was selling her butter dish, the tea towels, the money for bread. And I looked at some of those elderly women, and they don't even make them today. Remember those plastic galoshes they wore? Just put them up. I remember this woman was, this was in the 90s. And she had a scarf around her head, and her coat was so tight, she could hardly button it. And the ice was so thick. And she was walking across this marshy place. And it came over top of her shoes up to her ankles, down in her galoshes and feet. Hmm. And I remembered I they don't they didn't get much then. I think they got maybe $24 a month. But I remember I reached into my pocket. It was so good to give her a month's salary. Mm -hmm. Just put it in her hands. Hallelujah. Hmm. I left her there in the field, sobbing, trying to, looking up at the heavens, trying to pray. She could hardly pray for the tears that were coming out of her eye. She was thanking God. I, I kept telling her, you know, came from him, came from him. See, we have faith to work the word. They don't. <laughs> and I was there, too, it was hard. I was there two years watching these people struggle. And all that was in the store was cabbage and potatoes and onions. That was it. And you could buy pork in another place. They didn't eat meat for chicken or fish. It was pork, 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 pork. <laughs> but that wasn't what troubled me. We built five churches there and a hospital. Can you look at this little missionary and believe that? It just happened. I don't know how to explain to you how it happened. It just happened. Just the right people were in the right place at the right time. Amen. And the preachers were 18 and 19. The, the young boys were 18 and 19 pastoring the church. Amen. They came in playing guitars, and one doctor became a pastor. Hallelujah. And some, some man walked up to me I didn't know and asked me if I could help him with some drugs for his clinic. And I remember telling him that I would try to help him, thinking I'll just forget it. I won't see him again. But God won't let you forget it. I'm here to take you to that hospital got built. And all I had to do was just talk to two or three people. That's all I did. I just talked to two or three people. And God did the rest of 25 years. Are you listening to me? 25 years. I said, Lord, I'm a missionary. I'm not, I'm not here for a hospital. You just keep praying. You find out where your prayers go. Amen. Woo! <laughs> They'll go everywhere. They're like arrows, finding all the secrets of men's hearts when you pray. Jesus. Glory to God. Lance Barnard said that when he got in politics. He said, Lord, I didn't pray to be a politician. When did I ever ask you? He said, when you were praying in tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Because the spirit knows what is needed. And it searches into the deeper things. Separating the soul from the flesh and the spirit. Separating everything. Did we get persecution? I won't go into that. It was right bad, I'll tell you. It was bad. Everybody wanted credit for it instead of giving it to God. Right. But God got the credit. Amen. And I just found out recently they went for 25 years every summer. These doctors went. The doctors don't do that on their vacations. Wow. They don't if they have many. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you don't know what God's doing while you're praying. When you, I mean, you're calling up on his name. You're just not making a noise. You're making a joyful noise. Great. Come on. You're making a loud sounding symbol. Great. You're calling on the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for him? Is there anything too hard for God? No. Oh, you got something to shout about. When they were going to stand before the Lord. And he's going to read the books to us to what we have done for him. You know, we, we, we want to see something that God is doing when we do something. It's not that we deserve any credit. You're just not a Christian. You're a witness. There's a difference. A witness. Are you listening to me? You know what they do in the black churches? They say, do I hear a witness? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And he said that in the white church. Yeah. Do I hear a witness? Yeah. Does anybody have any amens? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you don't know what you're doing. But the other day, they get me every time. I pray for the light to be green when I get off of 17 on, on Glendale. And that light gets me every time because that's where they all line up. That's okay. She can tell you. I said, open the purse. We're getting there. Open the purse. And I've learned not to put the ones here and the five there's and the threes there. Whatever my hand brings up, that's what I put out the window. You got to trust God. I'm wow. telling you, we got to learn to trust God. And I remember this just happened. This young man had his sign if I hadn't seen him before. I thought, I said, you got somebody with you, don't you? He had a lady with him, and I knew they'd slept there. There's a place you could sleep there. They had it bankered with cement. And all of them sleep there on the weekend. Yeah. Then they get their signs out. Yeah. And my hand pulled out a $50 bill. <laughs> that man wept. Oh, he, he couldn't catch himself. He's trying to catch the tears, and the traffic is stopped. That they can't move. Because I got in there by the car, and the lights turned green. And I'm pulling <laughs> the money, and it's too late, it's out. Come on, the cat's out of the bag. You better let it go. You just got to let it go and see what God will do. Don't worry about it. God's got more. 